Hi everyone, I'm Steve Sabin, and I'd like to welcome you to a new series that we call Exploring Set Point. This series will be divided into a number of segments where we talk about various aspects of the set point system, and a good place to start is with a uh, overview of the various rack sizes that we use in the set point architecture. Here we have a four position rack. There are four modules in this particular rack, just like the name says. And we also have a larger uh, kind of sibling next to it, our eight position rack. This one happens to have a touchscreen display and a door on the front. I'll open the door so you can see we've got eight rack slots here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, another thing that you may not be able to see real well, and I'm not going to take the door off right now, but the hinge mechanism is designed so that the door will lift completely off. You can unsplug the uh, cable that uh, connects to the touchscreen display, and you can lift the door right off the rack, and that allows you to land your wiring on the front and do other maintenance functions very easily and then simply put the door back on. So the door doesn't just swing out of the way, it actually can lift right off the rack and be completely removed. So we'll close the door here and we'll take a look at our other rack sizes. Over here we've got our 16 position racks. This one happens to be the flush mount version where the modules are flush against the face and uh, the wiring is landing on the front here. When we use the flush mount uh, version of the rack, we don't put a door or a display on the front. We're basically making a decision that uh, we're using a, a blind rack in those instances, and uh, we'd have our display located elsewhere, or in some cases there would be no display at all. It would just simply be performing its machinery protective functions. Above it, we have a 16-slot rack that has a door uh, with a lock, just like our 8-position rack and a touchscreen. Uh, the only difference is that now behind this door and touchscreen we have 16 slots instead of 8. The racks are designed so that they can be mounted very flexibly. Here we have a 19 inch EIA type rack mounting. Uh, this type of rack can be mounted in a panel cutout that's typically square. Uh, this rack also can be mounted in a panel cutout and our little four position rack could, could be mounted in a panel cutout but it's more typical uh, for us to take the brackets that are on the front, mount them on the back, we have holes on the back on all of our rack sizes, uh, to flip those brackets around, put them on the back, and then we can bulkhead mount these racks. So the, uh, the rack could actually mount against a wall or against the back of a panel. And a lot of customers prefer that mounting because it doesn't take up uh, room in the front uh, of the panel and they may be using a, a different display. Now they might be using our touchscreen display or they might be using an HMI from some other part of the uh, instrumentation system. And in those cases they like to have the set point rack somewhere else so it's not taking up space in the front of the panel. We've got the bulkhead rack uh, mounting that we talked about. We've got panel cut out. We can mount the thing in 19 inch uh, EIA rails and uh, we've got the various brackets that allow you to flip them around, mount it in the back, flip them around, mount it in the front. When you do decide that you want to flip the uh, brackets uh, around, what that actually allows you to do, uh, in addition to bulkhead mounting, you can flip the entire rack around so that the wiring is now landing on the back of the rack instead of the front. And when you do that, you can still mount a door on the other side of the rack with a touch screen. So, uh, for example, I don't know if the camera can, can see the wiring that's coming into the front, uh, but this exact same uh, view from the front of the rack uh, could, uh, could be achieved whether you're landing the wiring on the front, behind the door, or if you flip that rack around and you're landing the wiring on the back. So we have a number of different options in terms of how you mount the rack, the sizes of the rack, uh, and uh, whether you have a door and a display or whether you have a blind rack in the set point system. On our next segment, we'll be looking at the various module types that are available in the set point system, and we hope you'll join us for that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Exploring Set Point.